the AI team at Microsoft has come up with a new AI framework for diagnosing clinical cases. So they have this interesting blog, The Path to Medical Super Intelligence, where they disclose about this particular Microsoft AI Diagnostic Orchestrator, which is a multi-agent AI system, which is designed to emulate a virtual panel of physicians with diverse diagnostic approaches collaborating to solve diagnostic cases. And what they say over here is that this particular diagnostic framework, when paired with OpenAI's O3 as LLM, correctly solved 85.5% of the NEJM benchmark cases. For comparison, evaluating 21 practicing physicians from the US and UK, each with 5 to 20 years of clinical experience on the same task, achieved a mean accuracy of 20% across completed cases. So if you look at the results over here, the AI framework seems to do 4x when compared to clinicians. Now, what is the catch over here? Or what is this particular diagnostic orchestrator? And what is this benchmark of NEJM benchmark cases? So I looked at this insightful thread from Dr. Dominic Ng, who is a medical doctor who has read this paper. Okay. And here is, here's, he says that here's my perspective of why this is both impressive and misleading. So what are the key innovations they created over here? So they created something called as SD bench, which is a testing environment using 304 real medical mysteries from NEJM, where AI starts with just 29 year old woman with sore throat and must decide what to ask test. Next, each week, the New England Journal of Medicine, which is NEJM, one of the world's uh, leading medical journals, publishes a case record of the Massachusetts General Hospital presenting a patient's care journey in a detailed narrative format. These cases are the most diagnostic, complex and intellectually demanding in clinical medicine, often requiring multiple specialists and diagnostic tests to reach a definitive diagnosis. So they want to test how does AI perform to answer this they created an interactive case challenge drawn from the NEJM case series. This is what they call as the sequential diagnosis benchmark SD bench. So if you look at this particular paper, okay, so here they talk about multi agent orchestration in the SD bench benchmark. A corpus of NEJM CPC cases is transformed into sequential diagnosis challenges through coordination among three agents you have a gatekeeper a diagnostic and judge agent over here at runtime the gatekeeper mediates requests for information from the diagnostic agent deciding if and how to respond to the diagnostic agent's questions about patient history examination findings and test results the judge evaluates whether the diagnostic agent's final diagnosis matches the ground truth reported in the original CPC article. So here there is more details about this particular benchmark in this thread. So what did they do? They took 304 real cases from NEJM and turned them into an interactive game. So the setup is step one, the human doctor or AI gets a tiny intro like 52 year old man with fever and breathing problems. That's it. No test results, no detailed history, just like a patient walking into the ER. There is a gatekeeper, which is your another AI agent. Okay. That has full case file, but won't tell you anything unless you specifically ask. So they are simulating a doctor patient kind of consultation over here. So you can do three things. You can ask questions like any recent travel, I, is there chest pain, order tests, make your final diagnosis. Okay, so the gatekeeper then answers the question, but it only reveals what you ask for. If you don't think to ask about travel history, you won't find out the patient has just risen from a cave expedition. So he's given a real case of histoplasmosis over here. So every test costs money. Every round of questions is equal to 300 office dollars, 300 office visit. That is what they have created this particular SD bench framework. Okay, sorry, SD bench benchmark, right? Now, what they next created is their particular MAI DXO, okay, which is their framework built on top of existing LLMs like Chat, GPT, Claude and Gemini. So how does this framework work? It asks the LLM to simulate a virtual panel of five specialized AI doctors. So you have Dr. Hypothesis, which tracks diagnosis, Dr. Test Chooser selects optimal test, Dr. Challenger plays Devil's Advocate, 
Dr. Stewardship manages cost, Dr. Checklist quality control. They argue it out between themselves as to the best path forward. So that is what is this particular orchestrator framework. So from the SD bench framework, you have a gatekeeper. You know, you have this virtual doctor panel which asks for a question over here uh, with the SD bench framework, get the answer, uh, it basically gets the answers. Then it can take one of these actions which can ask a question, request test, provide diagnosis. Once a diagnosis is confirmed, it's again evaluated against the ground truth over here. Okay, this is like a loop, right? So that is what this has been explained over here, all right? Now, what are the results? Okay, so as, uh, as it was explained over here, your doctors had 20%, AI standard 30 to 79%. So basically, AI, if you directly ask these questions to an LLM, you get this. But through this framework, you get a higher accuracy of 80 to 85.5%. Cost per case, if doctors was close to $2.963, right? So how is this cost being calculated? It is calculated like this, based on every test cost, real US price, every round of question is equal to $300. So depending upon what doctors ordered over here, based on the case, that is how doctor's cost was created. Depending upon doctor visit and doctor, like, you know, the cases ordered, you have this cost, which is O3's cost. And, but this system costed only $2.203. 97. So on paper, AI was 4x more accurate and cheaper. But what are the issues over here? They used zero healthy patients. 95% of sore throats are viral and this AI was only tested on incredibly rare diagnostic cases. So we don't know if it will order biopsies on every patient with a sore throat just to rule out some throat cancer, right? Some kind of uh, cancer. Two, cost effective ignores human toll. Their costs only count lab fees, not, you know, the anxiety of waiting for result radiation from some precautionary CT scans, complications from unnecessary procedures. Okay, all those kind of things, right? The fission comparison was rigged because docs, the doctors were banned from Googling symptoms, consulting colleagues, using up-to-date medical databases, calling specialists. So it was directly, you know, this is not how doctors practice. That is what this particular doctor is telling over here, right? These cases were already solved and published. Real medicine involves genuine uncertainty. Sometimes this diagnosis is never found. Does the AI know when to stop investigating? Okay. So, or know when to stop testing. Great doctors know when not to test. Okay. This AI was never evaluated. This headache is just stress. Let's wait and see. Right. The benchmark rewards finding zebras, not recognizing horses. Okay. So these were some issues with this particular thing. So what do we require in the future? We need more testing on actual patient populations, measuring over diagnosis harm, real world physician comparisons. Okay. So that is what this doctor is saying. And final thought is that we don't need AI that can diagnose every rare disease. We need AI that knows when to diagnose and when to reassure. That's the real art of medicine. So this is a very insightful post over here. A couple of things are answered over here by Microsoft as well. What they are saying is that, you know, um, what next they are saying, like, right, uh, is this AI safe to use for healthcare? It is not approved, okay, because you need rigorous safety testing, clinical validation, and regulatory reviews. It is just exciting initial research. So, will AI replace uh, doctors? While the AI technology is advancing rapidly, their clinical roles are much broader than simply making a diagnosis. They need to navigate ambiguity and build trust with patients and their families. So, you know, clinical roles will evolve with AI, giving physicians the ability to automate routine tasks, identify disease earlier, personalize treatment plans, and potentially prevent some disease altogether. That is what they are saying over here. Okay, what is an AI orchestrator? In the context of gener and, uh, generative AI, an orchestrator is like a digital conductor helping to coordinate multiple steps in achieving a complex tasks. In healthcare, the role of orchestration is crucial given the high stakes of each decision. So the orchestrator sits above underlying language models, making sure each point in getting a diagnosis is handled systematically, reducing the risk of future errors. Okay. Next question is, uh, why have you looked at costs? They wanted to understand whether AI was simply requesting existing diagnostic workup work to reach the right diagnosis, or it was able to, you know, ask, uh, reach the correct answer with much less money spent on testing. So that is what they are saying over here. Further details about this paper are present. Okay. Uh, so here is that comparison of these various models, you know, in terms of accuracy and your cost. That is what they are saying over here. So what they are saying is that this particular framework with an ensemble of models 
is much more cheaper than say a O3 which is being directly used, a language model which is being directly used. That is what they are saying over here, right? And if you look at just this particular system, uh, you know, with various budgets over here, it is still going to be cheaper and more accurate than directly using your LLMs. That is what they are saying over here. So they also tested various LLMs like, you know, uh, GPT, Llama, Claude, Gemini, Croc and DeepSeek. As someone who's been working in the healthcare domain, I find these results quite impressive. But as the doctor points out over here, we need testing on actual patient populations, measuring overdiagnosis harm, real world physician comparisons. So this is an interesting initial research work, probably requires a lot more work before we can put something into practice. Hope this video is useful. See you in another video.